Hi, I'm John Mandela, and I'm here with my associate, Adam Neal. We're down in Alco South Canton in our showroom, and we're gonna teach you a little bit about stripping and refinishing floors this morning. First thing you wanna do is get your room or area that you're gonna strip and refinish cleared. And then you wanna sweep and dust mop your floor, and then you wanna go into the process of cleaning your baseboards and your edges. Now, we're not gonna go into an actual demonstration of that, but normally what I use is a good baseboard cleaner that I apply twice to the baseboard. In some cases, if you have heavy buildup, you're gonna to have to use a scraper. And in all cases, you're gonna to have to use some kind of a heavy pad with a doodle bug uh, tool or a doodle or an edge cleaner that we have over here. We'll demonstrate it at a different time. Now, Adam's gonna go over the type of strippers we use. So one of the most important factors with you know stripping your floors, and whenever I say stripping your floors, I'm referring to removing all of the finish off of your floor. We'll go over top scrubbing floors um, here towards the end of the uh, seminar. So in regards to stripping the floors, you want to kind of identify how many layers of finish you have on the floor. And the reason why that's important is it's gonna allow you to select your appropriate chemical stripper to remove the finish from your floors. So to be specific with that, um, our hyperstrip, our hyperstrip that we have is very good at removing seven coats or less of finish. So if you have less than seven coats of finish, this is gonna be the ideal product for you. Um, it is a rinse-free stripper, which means it's a little bit more, it has a lower pH than a product like Meltdown. Meltdown is for a situation where you have seven coats or more of finish, or in a situation where you just don't quite know how much finish is on your floor, this is gonna be the product that I'd recommend. It's a very, very hot, very high pH, very alkaline product, and it's gonna give you a much better fighting chance of taking all of the finish off. Um, having said that, if you guys, just to be a realist, if you guys have, let's say 20 to 25 coats of finish, if it hasn't been stripped in many, many years, you're gonna probably be, you're gonna, I would recommend Meltdown, but it would also just give you the realistic expectation that you're probably gonna be doing it, this process twice, maybe three times if you wanna be a uh, perfectionist about it. So having said that, um, we're gonna, you know, cover the, you know, not only se selecting the correct product, but also the dilution side of it is also very important. Both of these products are diluted at five to one, meaning five parts water and one part product. So, you know, in our, in our situation, we've uh, filled the mop buckets that we have with five gallons of water, and we are going to add one gallon of floor stripper to our solution. And contrary to, you know, some, what some people will do, um, you know, adding more, you know, chemical to your solution is, is going to actually work in reverse. You know, water acts as a carrier to help pick up the floor finish that's, uh, you know, we're trying to carry away, you know, by virtue of uh, sucking it up with a wet dry vac. So I would highly recommend sticking to the recommended dilution. Getting back to the baseboards, I'd like to show you, this is a uh, and everybody's pretty much seen this, especially if you've been in this industry a long time, but this is your standard doodle bug. And just recently, in the last five years, they've come out with a sheen scrub doodle bug type that will scrub along your edges. So once you've dust mop or swept your, your floor, or you've cleaned your baseboards and you've rid yourself of all that buildup, all right, then it's time to start the stripping operation. Now Adam will have one of these buckets ready, we're going to start that process in a little bit. But he'll apply a liberable amount of stripper to the floor. You want to get it super wet, that's really, really important. So we're, this isn't going to be a process where we're going to wring out the mop, we're going to take it right out of the bucket, we're going to put it right on the floor, and we're going to apply it liberally. Once we do that, okay, once we do that, we'll wait five minutes, and then we'll apply another liberal amount on the floor again. All right, the first application of that stripper is gonna crack that finish and start penetrating it. And then the second application, when you run that mop around, it'll start ripping that finish right off the floor. And you'll find that a lot of your work is gonna be done at that point. Selecting the correct pad, you know, for the process. If we're stripping a floor, 
we're going to want to use a very aggressive, high performance, you know, 3M is my preference, you know, black pad, you know, for the process. Um, if we're top scrubbing a floor, which we'll cover at a later date, we're going to use a surface prep pad. So right now to mitigate any slip and fall issues, we're going to cover a little personal protective, you know, equipment. I'm wearing gloves. It's the chemical that invariably I get on my fingertips here in a little bit is very hot and I don't really want to get irritate my skin. We have a slip and fall, like a wet floor sign set up so that everybody knows what we're doing. And I'm wearing um, stripping boots um, so that I don't slip and fall. So it kind of mitigates any slip and fall scenarios. John is applying a solution um, that we're going to let sit, you know, for five minutes. You know, if you let it sit for seven minutes, that's fine too. You know, as you can see, he's applying it liberally. Um, so the worst thing that we can do here is let the floor, you know, dry up. Because the, you know, in doing that invariably, um, the floor finish will start to redeposit to the floor. Um, and that's definitely not what we want to do since we're trying to remove the finish and remove all of it. One of the things I want to enforce is when you put, first put this finish or this, this stripper down on the finish, it's going to become immediately very, very slippery. So it's really important to wait that five to seven minutes that he talked about before you reapply it again. Because at this point, at that point, okay, the stripper has had enough time to penetrate, okay, and go deeper into the floor. Initially, when you put it down, it hits that and it becomes wildly slippery. That's when you always have your falls and you get hurt. <laughs> so once I apply it, I leave it alone. I go wait five minutes and then I'll reapply it again. Um, one of the other things you can see is we have a, we have a uh, bucket with uh, a stripper solution that John just applied. We also have a bucket sitting here with just fresh, clean water. Because as soon as we you know, scrub the floor, um, and pick it up with our wet dry back, which we'll go over in a little bit. We want to then flood rinse it with some clean water to pick up any residual alkalinity, any finish that you know wasn't picked up with the wet dry back, and kind of you know just get the get the floor perfectly uh, spotless. Remember, I was talking about the slipperiness. Now I just applied this uh, just a minute ago, and if I went to step on this, you're going to see how slippery that has become. That's because it's cracked that first layer of the finish, all right, and that's when it's the worst. If I want to walk on this now, I'd probably fall right on my butt. All right, all right at this point, we've uh, waited about uh, eight minutes on this, and uh, I put the stripper boots on because I'm not going to take any chances, and I'm going to apply my second very liberal coat of stripper. Now, I will tell you right now, it's not very slippery right now because that first application basically cracked this finish all the way to the bone or all the way to the bare floor. And this is my insurance application to make sure that we penetrate every avenue of finish that's on this floor because you only want to do this once because it's a lot of work. Probably the most work you'll ever put into any cleaning application, you know, in, in, in our industry. So we've got that down. I'm going to put it back in the bucket, but we're going to wait another five minutes. This is our insurance. And then we'll start our application of the, what I call the mechanical application. And that is with the floor machine and the pad. Now let me tell you a little bit about these pads. There's all kinds of stripping pads out there. You want to get the most aggressive pads that are on the market, all right? And they're all high performance. And these pads are only as good as the aggressive qualities on the pads. Once they start to break down, all right, you take the pad and you throw it in the dumpster. A pad, I, I can remember a story where this custodian once told me, that he stripped 10 floors with one stripping pad. Which I thought, well, why did you do that? Because it took him all day or all of two days to do the job because there was no aggressive qualities back on the pad anymore. Because actually after a room, they're pretty well shot. As you can see, we are doing right now as we speak, um, 
you know, the, every, not every floor, whether it's terrazzo, whether it's VCT, whether it's some type of tile is going to be even. So what we're going to do here in the video is scrub, you know, walking very slowly, going in one direction. And then you're going to notice that I turn and kind of walk and frame the area that I'm doing in a different direction just to catch those uneven surfaces and tiles, you know, to make sure that we scrub every surface and square inch of the floor. To give you an idea of what the uh, pad looks like after Adam's finished scrubbing the floor and you notice he went both ways, okay, to try and get every bit of finish off the floor. But this pad now, Okay, it's filled with floor finish. Okay, you'll see it on there. All right, now that's a finish that has come off here and been redeposited. Some of it is in the solution and some of it is in the pad. Once this gets all gone up like this, the pad is no longer any good. All right, so just to give you an idea. One of the most important things to do after stripping a floor is to, you know, obviously once you're done scrubbing the floor, to pick it up as quickly as possible with your wet dry vac. Right. Once Adam has picked up all the stripper solution, then we apply a liberal amount of clear water onto the floor. This, this is a flood rinsing procedure. This tile is all the way to the bone all the way down to its natural state when, when they first put it down. So there's a lot of cracks and crevices in there, okay, because there's no seal or there's no finish on top of it to fill out all those cracks and crevices. So we use this flood rinsing method to make sure that every bit of stripping solution is out of those cracks and crevices that you would have to look, use a microscope to see, but it would have an effect on resealing and finishing the floor if we didn't do this. and you can immediately use the wet dry vac and pick it up. So being overly detailed, you know, I'm gonna use a microfiber flat mop just to go over the floor that we already flood rinse with clean water. And I'm just using clean water with this flat mop microfiber just to make sure that there's not a hair, not a fiber, nothing left on the floor. And it's funny people, as I've seen um, people that are not on the overly detailed side, you know, it's not, not uncommon to see hairs, you know, five, 10 layers underneath the finish. I've even seen, you know, as much as a band-aid that people have kind of overlooked. So, and, and I want you to explain uh, to why you use a microfiber over a standard mop. You know, a microfiber is going to pick up, you know, 10 times as much. It almost acts like a magnet because there's so many, you know, interwoven just fibers on a microfiber. So that's why I choose to use a microfiber flat mop rather than just a, you know, cotton string mop. It just gives you a much better rinse job. So I want to make a very important point today um, before we go any further um, in regards to um, no matter what facility you're in, if you're in a, a school, a nursing home, um, your, your hard floors are going to need to be on a maintenance program. And by that I mean um, every, generally every six years, every five years, you're going to want to strip the floor all the way down. In between those times, um, you're going to be able to top scrub the floors and recoat. And top scrubbing has become very, very easy in that 3M has made a surface prep pad as well as a surface prep pad plus that allows you to top scrub your floors and realistically remove one to two coats of finish um, with just water or you can even do it dry. So we're going to do a demo with that. As you can see, I took a mop and applied just a very thin coat of water. Um, just to act as a uh, 
lubricant and more or less just to keep the dust down. It's going to keep everything on the floor so that none of the dust gets uh, airborne. Um, one of the things that you'll notice instead of using a swing arm machine, floor machine, I'm going to instead use a square scrub oscillating machine on this section, you know, just to show you a different approach. One of the things you want to be very uber focused and cognizant of is the surface prep pad itself. Um, as you can see, this one has accumulated some finish. You know, we just did a small area over here, so this has a whole lot of life left to it. But after doing a whole entire classroom floor, this is going to be, all these fibers are going to be just covered with the floor finish that it's scrubbing to pick off. So what you're going to want to do is just flip it and use the other side for doing the other classroom. Traditionally, I always tell people that um, each side of the pad is going to do is good for one room, and then toss it and start over again. Immediately after you know top scrubbing the floor with the surface prep pad and the square scrub machine, you know we are going to um, flood rinse the area with water and pick up the solution, and then. Just like I did when I chemically stripped the floor, I generally wet a microfiber flat mop and just damp mop over the floor just to make sure that everything, every fiber, every hair, every possible thing that could be on the, left on the floor is off. And then it's ready to uh, have finish applied once it's, the floor is dry. Now that we have chemically stripped this floor and Scrub this floor with clear water. We're going to test to see if there's any residue. This floor is perfectly, it's dull. There's nothing left on it. That floor still has a shine to it, a bit of a shine to it, because there's still finish on that floor. If we remove the finish here, we've left some finish on the floor here. I'm going to run my hand across this, and I come up with no residue. So that tells me that our, our, uh, our rinsing operation, where we flood rinsed and we did a final rinse, worked very, very well. Over here, we'll check this one. It's still finished on the floor here, you can see it. And once again, our rinsing operation worked very, very well between the flood rinsing and the final rinse with the microfiber pad. Now, this floor and this floor are ready for finished application.